This topic is edge observability with ADOT, Grafana, Prometheus, and open search. As you can see from the background in the first slide. Uh, so let's start our our, our presentation. Uh, so uh, short, short agenda. Uh, a couple of words about me. What is observability? Edge observability design, observability tools, a hybrid cloud operating model, proposed design, and a small demo like for on premises uh, proof of concept. Uh, so Couple words about me. Uh, as you already heard, my name is Anatoly, and I'm solution architect uh, from uh, COE Solutions. Uh, I'm based in of in Singapore, so I'm working at SoftServe since 2018 uh, with a break. So last class continuous block is around like two and a half years. Uh, overall, I'm working in IT industry for the past 20 like four years. And currently what I'm doing, uh, I'm helping with uh, pre-sales and launching new project in, in APAC region. Uh, so this particular presentation is based on the like work we did for our customers, like one of my current projects, uh, which we do uh, together with AWS. Uh, so basically, uh, what's, what is observability? Observability, uh, describes uh, how well you can understand what is happening in the system, uh, often by instrumenting it uh, to collect uh, metrics, logs, or traces. Uh, and you do it basically to achieve operational excellence and meet business objectives. And uh, in order to do this, uh, you need to understand uh, how your system is performing. So basically, observability gives you the ability to efficiently, efficiently uh, detect, investigate, and remediate. Uh, this can and this should improve uh, your like operational availability. For example, reduce your MTTR. Uh, MTTR is like mean time to recovery or mean time to restore. It's like an average time it takes uh, to recover from a product or system failure. Uh, this includes uh, the full time uh, of the outage from the time the system or, or product fails to the time that it becomes fully operational again. So when you are like uh, operating some kind of business, uh, you must like ask your, yourself a question, what, what is the cost of operational failures to your business? And uh, that's why observability is so important because it helps you improve it. So once again, uh, detect, investigate, and remediate. Uh, when we are talking about detection, detect often, uh, often customers don't uh, detect issues uh, as soon as they begin. And there is often lag from when the issue starts uh, and when you are like notified. And basically you, you want to reduce this as much as possible uh, because it, obviously it causes like outage, like customer dissatisfaction, you break your SLAs and so on. So detection uh, should be proactive and uh, uh, multifaceted. There should be like alarms on telemetry, synthetic testing, et cetera. Anomaly detection is a key tool in this toolbox as well, as well as the ability to link uh, together related alarms to reduce alarm fatigue. So like it doesn't happen like you have like different alarms one after, after another or like in a certain period of time. You can respond to failures quicker if you alert near at the source of telemetry logs and traces. Like you can create complicated pipelines to centralize the data, to, but it, it reduces latency, but still uh, you will find your issues quite fast. Uh, when we're talking about investigation, investigation is where people spend the most uh, of time during the operational event. This is the largest, la largest contributor to MTTR like our extended downtime, cutting through the chaos and understanding what to focus on is really important and remains a difficult task for many customers. So leveraging logs, metrics, uh, tracing to help investigate quickly uh, to understand the root cause. Uh, correlation across metrics, logs and traces is uh, key here. So your time is valuable and you need to ensure uh, that you are focusing on the stuff that matters during the operational event. So you are not like spinning wheels here for, for like with no use. And remediation 
basically once you have identified the cost of a failure, you need to remediate it. This might be a short time fix patch, rollback, etc. Uh, try to automate your deployments and changes as much as possible. So there is nothing worse than trying to fix something and makes the situation worse. And like, don't forget to, to do like a post event analysis and uh, so on. Uh, so like uh, one of the most uh, common questions is that uh, asked very often, what is the difference between observability and monitoring? Uh, monitoring basically is a subset of observability and you will often see uh, like monitoring, uh, tracing and logging described as the three pillars of observability. So there are like other tools that help you achieve observability as well, such as like code profilers, uh, art artificial intelligence ops and so on. Uh, so like for now, like in this particular case, uh, we will focus on like monitoring, tracing and logging. Uh, so uh, as a customer, you should like ask uh, yourself a question, is, is my system up or down? Just to understand what, what's, what's going on there. Is it fast or slow as experienced by my end users? What KPI, KPIs or NSLAs should we establish and how do we know if they are being met? So you need to be able to spot uh, problems as they arise. So ideally before they disrupt the customer experience, uh, respond quickly and resolve them uh, quickly as quickly as possible. So to achieve this insight, you need uh, observable systems. So observability describes how well you can understand uh, what is happening in the system, often by instrumenting to collect metrics, lock and traces, as we mentioned earlier. So in the cloud, observability can be hard to achieve due to sheer system complexity. So observability enables you to detect and investigate problems. So detection, telemetry, alerts, application and performance uh, monitoring, what you should be focused on. So, so the term monitoring is sometimes defined uh, differently from observability. Uh, monitoring is an activity that makes a system observable. So alongside activities like tracing and logging, you that's one of the core pillars here. Uh, so like continuing talking about those like three pillars as a foundation of observability is metrics, logs and traces as, as I mentioned just now. So they, uh, they are equally important and they are key components to observability. There's like no, no one like key component here, like all, all of them are important because they different your different uh, perspective to your system and uh, allow you to identify like problems uh, more quickly when you have like different uh, directions to, to, to observe and use a problem. So logs are immutable uh, time stop uh, records of discrete events. Event log is immutable basically, timestamp uh, record and discrete events that happens like over time. Logs are useful for uncovering like emergent and unpredictable behavior. Metrics, uh, uh, numerical data measured with intervals, in, intervals of time. Uh, metrics uh, in their nature, uh, numeric representation of data measured over intervals of times. <coughs> and metrics are useful for identifying like trends, uh, modeling, and prediction. You can build like beautiful charts with metrics. And like if you visualize, visualize like the current current cells of the system, you can either like visually detect uh, when you're looking at the world, either if there's like some kind of spike or uh, on vice versa, like is there's like a drop in some particular metric. And using metrics, uh, you can like set up automatic alerting because when you're checking logs and uh, watching for predict, uh, like unpredictable behavior, you basically can like uh, distinguish it by like log level or some, or some kind of message, but metrics are quantifiable with metrics. You can like set like thresholds and uh, do uh, like uh, automatic alerting. Uh, traces are series of uh, related distributed events that encode and end-to-end -end flow. Trace usually a representation of a series of casually related uh, distributed events. Uh, and uh, they are different from, uh, in, in a sense uh, that they are like user-centric. Logs and metrics are system-centric and traces are user-centric. They provide visibility into the path uh, that the user had traversed. So you can, you can join like multiple log, log entries like into a single trace. Uh, so like, <clears throat> so about like uh, observability, observability design. Uh, 
Uh, this particular chart demonstrates the guidance uh, of observability application to get like deeper insights from application stacks and infrastructure matrix. Uh, it's based on like uh, AWS reference architecture. Uh, so to improve resiliency across like two, for example, two areas regions, it's essential to monitor application and infrastructure components across the entire stack. Uh, the diagram on this slide is an example of solution focusing around like well-architected best practices that are employed uh, by AWS through their like life cycles. So to be like well-architected, you should follow like uh, uh, as many well-architected best practices as possible. And <clears throat> in AWS ter terminology is also sorry, operational excellence, security, uh, reliability, performance efficiency, <coughs> cost optimization, and sustainability. So uh, now let's talk about uh, a bit of edge observability <coughs> because like in this particular project, uh, we have like a hybrid, hybrid architecture so some some parts of the system are on premises some parts in the cloud so <clears throat> what is like age of observability and why uh, why people are, are, are doing it uh, basically organizations that run age application with their premises on local compute instead instead of the central clouds uh, make the decisions for several users. So edge observability is observability when we are trying to observe system running like on the edge, not 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 in the cloud, but uh, more more often it runs like on premises. So an organization make uh, uh, like this this kind of decisions for like several reasons. Uh, there could be like la la latency requirements, regulations, <clears throat> and business continuity. Uh, the business must uh, run even if the connection is to cloud is down. Uh, for example, for this particular customer, we have like uh, it's like in ISV, and in, in it's it's on, it's on it's in on terms they have like three different types <clears throat> or groups of customers. The first group customers that are mostly online, they occasionally go offline. Then they have the second group of the customers <clears throat> that offline for prolonged period. They they may can come online only like, for example once a week. And the third group of customers, like uh, they are permanently offline. So there's no internet whatsoever. So like no, no cloud. So you, you cannot do anything basically. So like uh, we, will, we will check our hybrid approach later on how we could address it. Uh, so uh, another aspect <clears throat> here, like as I mentioned, business continuity and performance and availability of the edge applications themselves. Uh, therefore, we must focus on uh, and practically monitoring application at the edge. Edge monitoring is different from monitoring application in the center cloud in several ways. So those ways uh, you have individual applications running on, on hundreds or thousands of sites. Uh, like for example, in, the, in this case, our customer has like 3000 locations, on-premises locations. <clears throat> In, construct, in contracts, to, to, in a few running in the central cloud, because usually in the central cloud, you have like much, much less uh, like running systems. Usually it, if it's like very architected, it could be like uh, SaaS multi-tenant system that serves everybody. Edge sites have like contextual meaning of the applications and user for user experience. This is not the case for application in the central cloud. The user experience uh, could be co quite different. The number of sites combined is application uh, telemetry at each uh, edge site makes it challenging to feed all the data to central monitoring solution. Uh, you could like deal with the sheer volume of the traffic, but if, if you will be not careful, your like uh, bill could skyrocket to thousand, uh, ten thousand, hundreds of sites, or even to millions easily. So you should be like uh, watching out if you have like many on-premises system, how much uh, data they ingest into the cloud in terms of logs, metrics, and traces. So key design drivers in this case, uh, first one was like on-premises support uh, for containers running on the Windows boxes. Like it's a particular requirement in this case, uh, like uh, customers have like <laughs> Windows Server running like parts of the legacy system. So, so like this, this new system with observability 
in place should embrace the same hardware. Uh, future cloud scalability, uh, like uh, every ISE ideally wants to push the customers into a bright SaaS future where they don't need to like spend a lot of like on-premises infrastructure and deal with like uh, on-premises issue. So the goal is to be able to scale and evolve uh, for the future architecture changes. For example, if uh, some, some particular group of the customers is willing to move like uh, online in the cloud uh, for, for the SaaS solution, uh, this particular observability should be uh, like first of all cloud native and then like compat compatible with uh, like AWS infrastructure in this case. And the third driver is like it should be fit for purpose. So we have like a hybrid cloud operating model. So like this is this requirement to run on premises on the edge and respectfully uh, like run uh, observability part in a central location because like it much makes the life of the support like much easier. And like scenario-based use cases, which we will take a look uh, down down the line. Uh, so uh, on the left side, uh, you can see like AWS native services. And in our case, uh, like this left side uh, will be will be going away because like our solution is not running in the cloud; it's running on the premises. But on the right side, when we have like open source managed services, uh, that's something that we are like uh, willing and want to utilize uh, to provide like observability in this particular case. case. Uh, so like we will be using like managed uh, uh, Amazon managed service for Prometheus, Amazon managed Grafana, and Amazon open source service. Uh, Amazon open source service is uh, like uh, currently is built uh, upon like three main components, like Amazon open source ingestion service, <clears throat> which is basically cloud uh, open source data prepper instance. Uh, it should come into general availability like sometime around now. And uh, Amazon open source is Amazon maintained indexing solutions based on Elasticsearch. And Amazon open source dashboards and Amazon maintained user interface solution based on Kibana. And obviously, Amazon distribution for open telemetry. So, manage Grafana, open source service, and Amazon managed service for Prometheus. And ADOT, AWS distribution for open telemetry. Like uh, a bit more details to follow. Uh, so, like for observability tools in a nutshell uh, AWS uh, distro for open telemetry or ADOT. It's a, a secure and production ready open source distribution with reliable performance. Uh, you can run this part on premises. <clears throat> you can run like a dot in a container like on premises and it will perform just fine. But uh, recently AWS added an offering uh, to like provide ingestion service in the cloud. Uh, it's like a bit of uh, questionable for me, and like uh, I, I will, I, I, I will dig in, into more details when we will be talking about like cost optimizations, because like A dot has like an ability to do the filtering, and like if you are doing filtering in the cloud, then you're basically sending everything in the cloud and then do the filtering, so that doesn't make like a lot of sense. So not not in every case you should be using like a cloud ingestion service, uh, but anyway. <clears throat> It's very convenient. It's like open telemetry is unified standard for service. Instructional is sponsored by cloud native uh, uh, compute foundation. Uh, AWS managed service for Prometheus, it's uh, basically Prometheus managed service. Uh, I don't remember exactly on what particular flavor it based. Uh, as far as I remember, it was based on Cortex uh, by, because like, uh, uh, Prometheus evolved in a couple couple of uh, packaging packagings, and like one of the flavors is like Cortex system. So I believe managed Prometheus for, from AWS is uh, based on Cortex flavor. Uh, uh, so managed Prometheus like allows to monitor and provides alerts on container containerized apps, integrates with ADOT, AKS, ECS, A. AWS open source is 100% open source search and analytics suite. It's very easy to ingest. It's secure. So it's uh, able to search, aggregate, view, and analyze data across many, many different use cases. 
and manage Grafana and fully manage service based on open source Grafana. Uh, Grafana enables you to query, visualize, and alert on your metrics, uh, logs, and traces, and unify observability through the dashboards. <clears throat> so, like uh, AWS has a policy uh, uh, to embrace uh, the open source community. In January 2029, Elastic announced that they will uh, change their software licensing strategy and will not release a new versions of Elasticsearch and Kibana under Apache license. Instead, uh, instead they will provide like on Elastic license, which is uh, somewhat like more restrictive and not quite compatible with like other like uh, uh, weak open source uh, licenses. So in order to ensure open source uh, version of both packages remain available and well supported, including in their own offerings, Amazon had announced that AWS will step up to create and maintain uh, Apache license version to license fork of open source Elasticsearch and Kibana. And it, it's, uh, it was co called like open distro for Elasticsearch, uh, but right now it's called like open source uh, suite. So open, Amazon actually launched uh, their like open distro for Elasticsearch in around 2018. Uh, to provide customers, developers with uh, fully featured Elasticsearch distribution uh, in their like environment. And today, open source is like scalable, flexible, and extensible open source uh, software suite uh, for search analytics uh, and observability applications licensed under Apache 2.0. It's powered by Apache Lucene and uh, driven by open source project community. Uh, like. Uh, AWS still does some sponsorship and like a lot of source code contributions, but like it's uh, like uh, governed under the community. So open storage offers like a vendor agnostic uh, tool set you can use to build secure, higher performance and cost efficient applications. <laughs> and you can either have like a managed service in AWS or you can run it in the containers like on, on your own cloud on, or premises. <clears throat> so, uh, Open telemetry. Uh, with open telemetry, we have like <laughs> one, one particular challenge. And challenge here is that developers are currently using like multiple vendor, vendor specific SDKs and agents uh, to instrument their applications, increasing the management cost and overhead. So increased time to resolve issues as, as metrics and traces generated by different SDKs and agents are not correlated and lack of contextual information about uh, denial resources. So to address uh, this issue, uh, the solution was to create a standardized open source API SDKs and agents uh, to instrument applications once and send metrics and traces to AWS and uh, uh, partner monitoring solution. So correlated metrics and traces uh, at ingestion along with the contextual information about resources to help uh, connect applications uh, performance to infrastructure performance and reducing time to resolution. So that's what like uh, ADOT ad addresses, like Amazon distribution of open telemetry. So like ADOT, AWS distro for open telemetry, it's a secure open source distribution supported by AWS. AWS maintains it. Uh, it's like upstream first distribution of the popular cloud native com computing foundation project of open telemetry, uh, certified by AWS for security and predictability, uh, backed by AWS support, uh, one click deployment uh, and configuration from Amazon ECS and AWS uh, Lambda consoles, exporters for AWS monitoring solutions, including Amazon Managed Service of Prometheus, Amazon CloudWatch, AWS X ray. Amazon open source service and AWS like partner solutions. So uh, just a little bit about Amazon managed service for Prometheus. Uh, like uh, they're like basically two flavors. Uh, uh, here we focus like on the serverless uh, flavor. A serverless Prometheus uh, compatible monitoring service uh, for metrics and <clears throat> security monitor container environments and scale. So it's fully managed, secure, and highly available using multi other deployments. Uh, during the course of this project, <clears throat> we have compared like managed Prometheus like uh, via classic deployment and managed Prometheus serverless, serverless. And it seems like serverless uh, solution with the same load uh, would be a, bit, a little bit cheaper. 
So that's why we we have opted up uh, opted out for like <clears throat> serverless. Uh, so uh, it uses uh, the same open source Prometheus data model and uh, query language, and as they do today, to monitor performance of the catenite workloads. Uh, no upfront invest investments required to use the service, and customers only pay for the number of metrics ingested. So it's uh, like billing is very transparent and convenient. So it has improved its scalability, availability, and security without any need for having uh, to manage underlying infrastructure. <clears throat> so like uh, uh, typical use cases, uh, like it supports AWS and hybrid environments and workloads, and particularly that would be like our case. Uh, it's well-defined container workload monitoring, wide industry adoption with dozens of freely available metrics. Exporters, because it's <laughs> basically com com compatible with Prometheus, uh, workload and application metrics, monitoring high cardinality metrics, monitoring, and et cetera. Uh, so <clears throat> here you can see a typical metric collection setup. Uh, in order to scrape and export metrics uh, to AWS managed service from Prometheus instance, uh, we can either use AWS distro for open telemetry, a dot collector, or a standard vanilla Prometheus server. Uh, there is like a remote write uh, protocol that's supported by Prometheus. So uh, a dot has both uh, Prometheus receiver to scrape uh, Prometheus endpoints and the Prometheus remote write expo exporter to send data into the cloud. So the remote write protocol is designed to make the possible to really pro propagate uh, samples in the real time from sender to receiver. So uh, this highlighted particular part, uh, for Prometheus workspace is fully managed by AWS. So in just query, alert matter, rules, rules, infrastructure, everything is managed by AWS. <clears throat> and you can like uh, integrate it with either Amazon managed Grafana or like your, your own Grafana, whatever, or any other, any other solutions that is able to read metrics from Prometheus and respectfully visualize it. <clears throat> so about Amazon Managed Grafana. Amazon Managed Grafana is like a scalable, secure, and highly available fully managed Grafana service. It's automatically scaling helps offload operational management. Uh, you can analyze, monitor, and uh, do alarms across multiple data sources, like native AWS as well as like a third party. A native integration with like multiple AWS services for enterprise level security access to Grafana enterprise data source via the AWS marketplace directly from the console and simple place you go AWS billing. Uh, so like a couple of words about like open search. So how does open search relate to up, uh, Amazon open, open source ser service? Uh, as I mentioned, open search is community driven. Open source uh, and analytics suite uh, delivered from Apache 2.0, uh, Elasticsearch 7.10, and 7 and Kibana 7.10 at the time when the, the licensing model was changed. And currently it's supported by community along, uh, together with AWS. It's uh, distributed any search engine powered by Apache Lucene, open search uh, and data visualization and user interface. Open search dashboard, dashboards based on Kibana, as I have mentioned. Also includes a series of uh, like functionality adding like tools and plugins. So it's like very convenient. It has like a tight integration with AWS services. And includes like all, all advanced uh, functionality ported from open distro for Elasticsearch. Uh, so op <clears throat> Amazon open source service uh, security unlocks real-time search monitoring and analysis uh, of operational data. It's managed service. So it creates operational excellence by using a popular open source solution. It's secure, uh, audit and secure your data. is a data center and network architecture and built-in certification from AWS and other vendors. It's cost conscious, so you can optimize time and resource for strategic, strategic work. As I have mentioned, you can like uh, run like data prepper like on, on premises and do like a filtering at the data prepper level or a dot, le a dot level, level. Obs observability like it allows you to detect, analyze, 
and remediate uh, the system issues throughout the an open source solution and ma machine learning, allergen virtualization, there are different integrations and plugins available. So what, what are the benefits of, of Amazon open source service? So <clears throat> it's fully managed, as I <laughs> mentioned previously. With Amazon open source, you can deploy it in minutes. The service simplifies just, just a couple of clicks. Uh, it simplifies <clears throat> deployments and management tasks such as like hardware provisioning, software installation, patching, failure recovery, backups, and monitoring like fully managed by AWS. So we don't need to care about any of those. Uh, to, to monitor your clusters, Amazon Open Source Service includes built-in uh, event monitoring and alerting. So you can get notified on changes to your data and practically address any issues. And uh, you can like monitor your AWS infrastructure or your edge infrastructure on premises infrastructure. You can have access to all the data, capture, retain, correlate, and analyze all the data. It's cost effective. U ultra warm and cold storages are appropriately low cost storage tires that can uh, reduce cost significantly comparing to storing data only in the hot tire. So Amazon open source there provides advanced features without like additionally licensing fees. So you can send your data to S3, to Glacier, and like save, save, save a lot on the storage. And for further lowers your total cost of operations by eliminating the need for dedicated team experts to manage your clusters. So it's secure, as I have mentioned, security is like a crit a critical to your business. And Amazon Open Source Service takes care of all security patches and offers network isolation via VPCs. Uh, fine-grained access control and multi-tenant support. Your data is encrypted and uh, at rest using keys you create and control through AWS key management ser service. And the node-to-node -node encryption capability provides additional layer of security <clears throat> by implementing transport layer security for co all communication between instances in a cluster. Amazon Open Source Service also HIPAA eligible and compliant with PCI DSS, SOC, ISO, and FedRAM standards, like <laughs> any certification you need, AWS can provide the certification and you uh, can have like a certified cloud and uh, uh, run without violating any, any compliance rules. So any industry specific or regulatory requirements uh, could be fulfilled by AWS Absorbability Cloud. So it's highly scalable and available. Amazon Open Source Service lets you store your up to three petabytes of data in a single cluster. Uh, with your cross cluster search, you can like uh, federate your queries up to 20 clusters. So you can like have like 60 petabytes of uh, data. So there's like not, not a problem, is it? It's tightly integrated with other AWS services like uh, with Amazon Kinesis, CloudWatch, uh, like no problem. Else. It also has integration with AWS IoT. So if you have like IoT core, you can like use it with this. <clears throat> so like dedicated cluster configured optimized for your workloads in minutes, wide range of IDS instances, and so on and so on. Quite a lot of it, let's move forward. Uh, so like you can make open source like even easier. Uh, in this particular case, we also opt out from open source serverless because like per hour, like uh, estimation of on consumption, in our case, serverless would be sl slightly cheaper. And usually uh, when you take a look at AWS uh, services, then their serverless offering usually like a bit cheaper if they have like a regular man managed solution. So you have collections, you have open source compute units. So in, in case of open source compute units, you can use index and search applications with like six gigabytes frame increments up to, up to four, four per account and uh, max uh, open source compute units can be a set of control costs automatically provision. What, what, what does it mean? Like they uh, like don't bill you uh, for like count of metrics but instead for like uh, compute units that you use to, to process it. So, so the, uh, you can flexibly, flexibly uh, be very flexible and control the number of compute units you consume. And it doesn't matter how many data you feed. You just need to make sure that like you, the number of compute units you have is enough to process your throughput of, of data, data, data feed. 
So like, uh, let's talk a bit about cost optimization because as I mentioned, your like bill can skyrocket very easily. Uh, so you, with ADOT, you have an ability <clears throat> to filter metrics using processors. There's like filter processor available and resource processor. Filter processor is a part of AWS Open Telemetry distribution, and it can uh, be used as a part of metrics collection pipeline to filter uh, out unwanted metrics because like exporters can produce hundreds, even thousands of metrics, and uh, you will you will pay for ingestion and storage of those metrics in, in case you are like, pr processing it. Resource processing is also built into the AWS Open Telemetry Registrar and can be used to remove unwanted metric attributes. So it would be like more lightweight and you can save only like on your storage. Uh, customized metrics and dimensions, you can uh, configure the exporters to generate only the set of metrics that you want to send. Uh, in our solution, we uh, selected Fluentbit. Uh, and it was like based on uh, AWS reference architecture and was agreed by both AWS and customers. So in case of Fluent Bit, it's also very important to save on logs because if you have like 3000 locations and like a lot of microservices and like components there, they can generate quite a lot of logs. So Fluent Bit has a rewrite plugin and you can configure like multiple uh, filters to uh, mappings to outputs. And you can direct only uh, like sensitive, like essential data, like error messages, for example, that should be like immediately available indexed in the cloud. And you can like uh, direct other messages into a different storage with like S3 plugin. And you can direct like all the remaining garbage uh, to your like local file system if you don't want to send it to, to the cloud. Uh, so, like a little bit about hybrid cloud operating model. In this our case, uh, we have like two parts online, on premises and online. Online, uh, we have like as I mentioned several types of the customers: online, temporary offline, prolonged offline, or permanent offline. So there are like different cases to cater. And cloud will be using for data sync. Uh, cloud, cloud is currently being used for uh, data sync services, reporting services, licensing services, and data services. And in this particular case, we will be adding observability services uh, to our stack. So hybrid cloud operating model provides like high visibility, uh, manageable at scale and, and proactive monitoring. So we reduce human errors by in, in intervention. Currently the technical support should go on premises to check the logs most of the time. And it implies uh, like reactive approach. And it's very hard to manage this at scale because like, <clears throat> it's uh, cost are, could be very expensive because going on premises just to diagnose the problem is very ineffective. And in this particular case, uh, like our custom, customers have customers spread across 56 countries and sometimes to fix some issues, uh, the staff needs to go on premises. So basically visit another country. And uh, proactive monitoring, early detection and remediation, the goal is to detect the problem and get alert before the customer finds it. Because right now, something bad happens, customer notices, starts uh, calling the ISV, ISV sends technicians on site to check the logs, to repair. That's quite slow, terrible, expensive, and inefficient. So uh, two example, uh, two basic uh, scenarios. The first scenario, like error remedi remediation. There is like error in the system. Uh, we have alert in the dashboard. Uh, uh, support uh, customer support representative is notified and uh, is able to rectify or ask the customer for more details. The second scenario is like data collection, like host information, database information, license information, uh, periodic health check, uh, all this data collected as a, as a matrix and stored and uh, uh, in, with a health check end, and then we can have like a beautiful dashboard for monitoring and uh, to do the diagnosis. So let's jump to the proposed design. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see uh, on the left side, uh, there's like a, a light gray background. Uh, we have like a Windows box. As I mentioned, it's uh, like constraint we have like in this project uh, because like it's a Windows software and uh, customer have some legacy uh, modules that are running on the server and our system should run on the same, on the same server. So basically we have like a Windows box and this Windows box we have a legacy application and our like new application. And we will be running like a dot collector. 
uh, that will get uh, like matrix or OTP receiver, uh, matrix and traces. Also, we have like Fluent Bit for logging. And with Fluent Bit, uh, we can route our logs like to different destinations. We can like send er error logs uh, for like Amazon Open Source Serverless for like uh, real time analysis, alerting, and so on. Uh, we can store our like uh, detailed logs in the local storage and can like either manually trigger to S3 or like through FluentBit S3 plugin. And for A dot, uh, we will push the metrics to Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus and uh, OLTP exporter will push data to the data prepper and data prepper will push traces into Amazon Open Source Serverless. And we will have open source dashboard uh, to uh, go through the open source serverless and uh, visualize it. To visualize uh, Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus, we will utilize Amazon Managed Grafana. And uh, it will be con uh, configured with alerts. And those alerts will go through Amazon Simple Notification Service and respectfully could be sent or alerted uh, through like pager duty or like emails, SMS, whatever. And for S3 bucket detailed logs, it could be sent like to Glacier and uh, to Glacier Deep Archive to save to save on our costs. Uh, so uh, proposed like <clears throat> design for local on premises options. As I mentioned, we have customers that like permanently offline. They air gapped, there's like no internet or cloud whatsoever. So in this case, we will have, we have slightly higher requirements in terms of CPU and RAM, uh, but we, able to man, to run Prometheus container just fine, con Grafana container, and even Amazon open source container. And in this case, we can uh, configure Grafana to retrieve data from open source, or even like spin uh, if we have like available resources, open source dashboard container and have all the same infrastructure as we have in the cloud. So demo time, uh, like, uh, it's a POC uh, diagram. Uh, what we will have like in the demo, uh, we will have like a PostgreSQL database and two uh, servers, uh, very basic servers talking to each other written in .NET C Sharp, user service and wallet servers. And we have like a health agent uh, written like in Go. Uh, those uh, will be posting data to a dot collector. And Fluentbit logs logs will be going to Fluentbit, and uh, metrics and traces will be going to A dot collector. Uh, from A dot collector, there will be like two pipelines. One pi pipeline will send metrics to Prometheus container, and the second pipeline will send traces uh, to uh, Amazon Open Search container. And we will have Grafana container to take a look and uh, Prometheus metrics and open source dashboards container to take a look in open source con container. And uh, obviously like logs will be written like in local storage uh, in FluentBit. Like FluentBit, there's like multiple output plugins. Uh, so like a quick talk through, uh, like, uh, <laughs> I basically just went through those components. So we have Postgres the database user service voices and health again, and have like AWS components, which like, in our case would be running uh, on premises for, for purposes of the demo. <clears throat> no, I, I will not go through the slide. Basically, let's uh, let's uh, jump uh, to the demo. Uh, I have like a local environment running here, like in Docker. Uh, as you can see on my screen, we have like health agent, uh, open telemetry collector. It's like a A dot Amazon open telemetry distribution for open source dashboards, user service, wallet service. Uh, PG web is like web interface uh, to Postgres. Uh, we will use like to take a look at our database and simulate failure. And uh, we will have like Grafana, we have FluentBit, uh, Data Prepper, uh, Postgres, Prometheus open search, everything is running. <clears throat> Uh, I have started this like about like an hour ago. So now let's go uh, through what we have running. So this one is a user service. Uh, we have like five users here. Uh, then we have like user retriever employment. Uh, and in the user service, we have like a wallet endpoint uh, that we'll call it wallet service. 
and here we will see simulate our like <clears throat> issue. Uh, and here we have like wallet service. Yeah, it's running on a different port. Basically, it shows like the same as this the, the <clears throat> previous previous. Uh, so PG web. Very simple, single database and two tables, user table and wallet table. I will use it to simulate our failure. Uh, here is like Prometheus running, all the metrics it's scraping and providing its own. And we have like a couple of uh, Grafana uh, dashboards. Uh, this dashboard is for targeting for and uh, the other one chat indicates what is up currently everything is up so like it's in single line so you cannot see other items here uh, also we have like a http server so in case there are like any issues uh, we can spot it here <clears throat> we have like another 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 dashboard for cpu time and uh, threads that consumed uh, by our services <clears throat> Here's like a fancy uh, go matrix that uh, those provided by our health agent. <clears throat> and here like uh, Prometheus dashboard because you, you, you must know that your uh, <clears throat> monitoring solution, your observability solution is running fine. So this particular dashboard shows that like Prometheus is running fine. We don't have any issues with the scrapers. There are like no, tar no tardy scrapers, no reload failures, no skip scrapers, all scrapers avoid just fine. So we have like around like 800 uh, uh, series and like we have uptime 100%. Everything is perfect. <clears throat> Some fancy graph. Okay, and here, here we have like uh, open search dashboards. It's based on Kibana. So interface should be familiar for those who are using Kibana. Uh, here we have like fluent bit logs. So like logs, as, as, as you remember, our diagram logs are sent to open search as well for indexing. And we have like a couple of those boards. Uh, this dashboard dis displays how many, uh, how many infos we have and here how many errors. So right now we don't have any errors. And here, basically, how many messages are coming through. Uh, so let's go ahead and simulate some kind of issue. Uh, let's uh, do like a database upgrade. So basically, let's go to wallet and rename a column. We have like here uh, wallet ID, wallet address, and amount. Let's change uh, like uh, amount column name to like balance. So let's alter the table. So run query, check our table. So we have balance. Uh, so now let's go to our like uh, microservice and try to re request balance. Oops, we have an error. Uh, but like this error is quite generic, and like it it it, it may be it may be it may be a bit weird, uh, but actually uh, you should ex ex expose generic errors to your users to end users. Uh, that's one of the security requirements. And recently, like we did like uh, threat modeling with AWS security expert. And one of the requirements was to expose only generic errors. So you cannot expose like any details in error output to your end users. And I believe like it's a general requirement across like most, most of the projects. So what's what's going on here? Like here, like uh, services are not available. Uh, let's take a look here. Nothing happening here. Let's take a look here. Something is happening here. Something is definitely happening here, but like metrics uh, do not allow us to understand what has happened because they basically uh, gather like numeric data 
And here, like our service is up, but it's like just erroring out. Uh, so we are going uh, to Amazon Open Search and try uh, to diagnose our problem. Oops. So like in this dashboard, we can see that like there was spike in errors. So basically what we can do in like in, in real life, we can uh, uh, connect alerting. So in case there's like a spike in errors, we can like proactively send an alert. So in case something had, bad had happened, we do the alert. So let's uh, try to, yes, see level error. So we have errors here. So let's check what's going on here. So stack trace uh, string here, there was like unhandled exception in Postgres. And in the details, we see that a column amount doesn't exist. So basically we identified our issues. Like I, I know it's, this example is pretty basic, but it's, it's what, what, what we can do here quickly. So let's go and remediate this issue. Let's, let's roll back and uh, change the balance, balance column uh, back to amount. Okay, it's back. Uh, so let's call our microservice again. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. So we have, we had 10 hits, no more errors. Uh, we are fine. We can also simulate uh, something like a bit more, more serious. So let me go ahead and try, for example, stop one of the microservices. Uh, let's stop, let's stop wallet service. So wallet service is down. So here, nothing here, no errors. Everything is fine. Uh, so, but we can complement it with the metrics. In this particular case, uh, we see that like our yellow line and yellow line is instance of wallet service is not up anymore. So that's how we complement like metrics and logs by uh, remediating and fi finding like different issues. So let's re try to remediate it as well. Uh, let's go ahead and try to start it back. See what's going on. Yeah, the service is back. Uh, you basically can see here it yet. Yeah, you can see like the, the line jumped up. So we, we are back, we are online. So basically that concludes our like today's presentation. Uh, there were like no, no questions like along the course of the presentation. I ran uh, very quickly through the open source slides because like uh, I went overboard like and uh, inserted quite a lot of like open source materials. Uh, but I think you had the, got like a pretty good idea how to do the edge observability with AWS. So guys, any any questions before we wrap up? This is Mikhailo. I think I have one. Thank you for wonderful presentation, first of all. And have you have you done any comparison on the uh, serverless pricing model and and not serverless? For, yeah, like for your we, particular we, case. Yes, we did in this particular case, and like in uh, serverless was was cheaper. Like I mentioned during the presentation, that AWS usually uh, pricing the serverless solutions a bit cheaper. Then the regular one, like, uh, like it goes like following. You can you can run like for example, in uh, EC two in compute, and it will be expensive. 
then you can opt for managed service, which usually like uh, cheaper and server serverless usually is the cheapest. Like uh, we, we sat together, like on this particular project, uh, this project is primed with AWS. Uh, so like we have like regular sync ups with AWS. So we said, I sat together with two AWS cloud architects and we like uh, did like a consumption estimation. Like <laughs> I, could, I have calculated pricing and like uh, first like I've calculated pricing for a regular managed solution. Uh, but then I, AWS architect uh, recommended serverless and he rec recalculated and his recalculation were like a bit cheaper, not not by by a lot. Uh, let's say like, for example, like my solution was like around uh, 10,000 per month and his solution with serverless was like around eight or, or 9,000 per month. So it's like, was like around 10, 10% cheaper. Okay, okay, that's that's good to hear. And, and usually they, they 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 try to price it this way to stimulate uh, their customers to to use serverless more. Okay, yeah. have have you tried the scaling of the serverless solutions? Uh, basically, any uh, bas in, 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 yes. In ba ba basically, we are at the development stage, but like serverless solution uh, scale by. Uh, OCUs, compute units. Like I mentioned that, for example, uh, for for like uh, for Grafana, you can for open source you can have like uh, four compute units. Those compute units like were quite powerful, and like uh, the pricing comes into increments. Uh, uh, what we did, uh, we sat together like and did the estimation of how much metrics, logs, and so on we want to ingest, and then to what kind of processing power we will need. So in this particular case, our like our like estimate of throw output uh, ended up that uh, one compute unit would be enough for 3,000 location, and we even have like some like around like 20, 20, 20, 20 to 30 percent uh, room for growth. And like the, you're asking about like pricing for scaling on how how do you I mean how, uh, how, any any uh, any doubt any problems that you have there, there shouldn't, shouldn't be any problems because it's like a fully fully managed fully automatic process you just okay. uh, pay, pay pay for extra compute unit and uh, that's it because like it's it's lot balanced it's clustered it's everything everything is managed by this you 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 just like uh, pay pay some extra buck and, and and that's it okay thank you that's that's great any other questions yeah, if you allow one from my side. Uh, have you actually compared the price of PCU uh, of having all of that in uh, AWS comparing to your own on-prem? Uh, we didn't uh, because uh, like, well, do you mean like on-prem on for the ISV to send all the data for, from 6,000 locations to to the customer, yeah. Uh, to right. ISV. Uh, yes, this ISV do not have uh, <clears throat> their own infrastructure on prem, and as I mentioned, this project was primed by AWS. So we, we don't have a contract with ISV directly. We have a contract with AWS. Uh, so, like we didn't basically calculate it, but obviously. It it could be cheaper because uh, you just pay for the hardware and then it's labor of your DevOps uh, to manage your on-premise on-prem infrastructure. So you don't need to care how much you ingest. You can basically uh, buy like a lot of like HDDs and like ingest everything. But then it co comes at a at a cost of like hardware, energy, and labor. And uh, basically, customer doesn't doesn't want it. They want to partner with AWS, so they they even didn't want to consider it. That's absolutely fair enough. And even to complement your answer, I would even add that it's not only your HDDs, because if you're uh, processing your logs, it's actually uh, during the transformation phase. 
uh, you'll be utilizing your CPU a lot. Right, and, and overall hardware. Yeah, and uh, for example, currently I'm having a customer who has like a 10 terabytes in Elasticsearch and has hundreds of nodes which are utilized more than 70% of CPU all the time. Sorry, not 10 terabytes, 10 petabytes, I'm sorry. Quite a lot. 